Hey guys, thanks for popping in today. Um, we're gonna be talking about the PS4 Pro and specifically what kind of computer you can build for about the PS4 price. So let's hop right into that build. Okay, before we get going, I just wanna throw out a few things. First off, this build is gonna come out to roughly $450, which yes, I understand fully that that is an extra $50 more than the PS4 goes for at most places right now. So it is what it is, but I feel like the $50 extra is a worthy investment in this computer. The other thing I wanna point out is that this computer I purposely gave some good upgrade paths for so that as you move down the road and maybe you have more money to invest in this computer, you can make it that much better and make a stack up versus consoles also that much better. So with no other reason to really wait around, let's hop right into the build that I put together for, like I said, roughly $450. And with any computer, we're gonna start right off with the CPU because it is the brains of the operation. And in this case, I went with the i3-6100. And the reason for that is you will get two cores with four threads. Um, most games won't take any advantage over four physical cores, which yes, I understand an i5 will be better for gaming. But since we're trying to keep this as budget oriented as possible, I felt like the $110 price point that PC Part Picker listed out for this, depending on where you get it, there's some fluctuation, but I felt like that $10 is worthy, uh, or that $110 price point is a worthy amount to spend on a solid processor that's gonna give you pretty good gaming performance, especially if you're on a budget, we're talking that 1080p range. And it saved us $10 over the i3-7100, which I didn't really feel like the KB Lake part gave us enough extra performance to justify a whole 10 extra dollars worth. But you can always switch out the motherboard and CPU from this build and customize it to your heart's content, as you know. Next up for the motherboard, we went with the ASRock H. 110M DGS LGA 1151 socket. And this is a very budget oriented board. It comes in on Newegg right now at right at $48. So it does give us plenty of features though that we do want in a computer, in a gaming computer. That is, it gives us four SATA ports, which is not a lot, but it is a micro ATX board and it does give us room then for up to four SSDs or hard drives or some combination of that. It gives us tons of storage expansion for, for the system we're going for. It also gives us two uh, DIMM slots for our RAM, which we'll get to in a minute, but essentially we went with a one stick configuration to start with, which allows us to upgrade that later on down the road if we wish. And one of the things I do really like about this motherboard is that it has a PCI, uh, PCIe times one slot above the PCIe uh, by 16 slot. And the reason I like that is because that gives us room for a wireless expansion card. It gives us room for um, any number of other expan expansion cards that you may wanna put in your computer beyond simply your uh, graphics card. Another good example that a lot of gamers may find attractive is a capture card can fit in that slot as well. So you can do a lot with this computer as an upgrading, um, as an upgrading platform through this motherboard. The layout is really good in my mind for a micro ATX board and the price point was where we needed to be. For memory, I already mentioned this. This was, this was purely a budget decision. We went the one stick of crucial eight gigabyte, uh, DDR4, uh, 2133 megahertz RAM. However, if you find something cheaper, by all means go for it. The only reason I picked this stick was it was the cheapest I could find for the capacity on a one stick configuration, which again, I said I want that because that gives us an upgrade path with our second DIMM slot down the road. For storage, I went with a little bit of a controversial thing for a computer uh, system in 2017, and I went with a one terabyte Western Digital hard drive. And the reason I did that is because it's a gaming PC, which means we are gonna be putting a lot of games on it. And I felt like if I spent a similar price 50 to $60 on an SSD, the best case scenario would be getting a 240 gig SSD, which would be great for doing things like browsing the web and um, consuming like Netflix videos, YouTube, that sort of thing, except that it won't hold many games. So this is one of those places you can upgrade down the road, but I would start with the hard drive, which will give you massive storage for all your games. And then if you wanna speed your system up down the road, you can get a 120 gig hard drive if you're still working off of a budget 
for about $40 and put your OS there and that way you'll have all the speed of the SSD but you'll still have the mass storage of the one terabyte hard drive. And now probably the most important part of any gaming PC and that is the graphics processing unit or the GPU otherwise known as display adapters, video cards, basically the most important part in a gaming PC. And for us, we went with the uh, Zotag GeForce uh, GTX 1050 Ti, and this is a miniature card. And the thing I like about this card is it requires no extra power outside of being plugged into the PCIe slot. And that really gives us some flexibility with cable management in a micro ATX case that is budget oriented, like we'll see later it really doesn't give us a ton of flexibility with cable management. By eliminating one cable from the necessary, that'll make our cable management a little easier. And the other thing I love about the 1050 Ti is it's a great budget card for 1080p gaming. You're gonna be able to game even modern AAA titles at either ultra or very high settings, and you'll still be hitting that 60 FPS mark on the regular basis, if not constantly. The 1050 Ti is gonna give you plenty of lifespan um, as we saw with the 750 Ti, which used to sort of hold that mark of the 100-ish uh, dollar GPU, uh, $100, $150 mark. Uh, used to be the 750 Ti occupied that space as the go-to card. The 1050 Ti, in my mind, is that go-to card now. And again, with this build, if you want to customize it to your extent, if you pay another $50 more, you can get an 8 gigabyte. Uh, RX 470 from AMD that'll give you even better performance and that's only going to cost you an extra $50 um, of overhead as you build out this system. So if you're trying to hit that $500 mark instead of about the 450 mark that we're hitting, you may want to go ahead and go for the RX 470. Again, as a PC builder, it's completely up to you. For our case, our enclosure for all of these lovely components, I went with the Rose Will SRM-01, it's a micro ATX um, tower case. It is gonna be a small case, which is good because it'll be low profile. I also like the aesthetic that it is sort of, it'll blend in with a living room setup if that's where you want your computer, just as well as it'll blend in in an office setting. And the nice thing is that because it's so small, it won't be hard to find a place for it to live, hopefully off the floor. Some things to consider with this, um, one of the things I immediately noticed is, unlike a lot of other budget cases, it has a completely painted interior. So even on the inside, it's completely black, and it'll look good in almost any setting. Now, it does pre present some cable management um, challenges because there aren't a lot of ways that the manufacturers of these budget cases can really make that a simpler process without driving up costs. So yes, cable management will definitely be a challenge. However, um, since this case does not have a side window, as long as you get cables somewhat out of the way, they'll be just fine. They won't hurt airflow and they won't hurt thermals all that much, if at all. Um, there's a great Linus Tech Tips video on this where they tried to limit airflow in a case and they found that it really didn't matter that much if even if you have a rat's nest in front of some of your fans. So just tidy those up as best you can and this case should be just great. And the final part of our build is the power supply and I went with a simple EVGA 450 watt 80 plus bronze certified power supply. There's nothing special about this. It's not modular, which means those cables will be in the way and sort of annoying to work with. However, the 450 watts does give us a lot of overhead with our current system to upgrade parts down the road, whether that be adding hard drive, SSDs, a higher power graphics card, or whether you want to do something like add an i5 processor down the road and replace that i3. It gives us all the upgradability we need in a system this size. You won't have any problems whatsoever um, upgrading and having to worry about overdrawing on the power. So that's why I went with a 450 watt power supply. And I picked this particular one because it's from a reputable company. It's 80 plus bronze certified and the price was right. So that's it guys, we just built for $450 a PC that would blow any console, including the new PS4 Pro, 
out of the water in almost every scenario, at least as far as gaming goes. Plus, as a PC, you obviously get all the other advantages of being able to do things like work-related tasks or just watching Netflix, YouTube, which yes, you can do on consoles, but I find the, the, the PC experience is a little bit better, um, and that's subjective, but that's purely my opinion. Now, we did go $50 over where I wanted to be with this build. I wanted to keep it around $400, but I really didn't feel like the compromises, if you're buying new parts, for four hundred dollars, I didn't. I didn't feel like that extra fifty dollars was worth the trade-off of the performance we were gonna give up. But if you go the eBay route, you can often find a lot of parts for a lot cheaper. And yes, they're used, so there's some risk associated with that. But a lot of times, you can save a lot of money going that route with certain components like graphics cards, processors, motherboards, swords, etc. And as always, guys, all the links to all of the things that I just talked about are in the description down below. I will also leave the PC part picker list down below so you can sort of see where some of the better deals are outside of Amazon. And of course, you can always adjust this parts list however you want to fit your use case scenario. If you're still with me in this video and you like what you saw, you like these types of computer build videos, go ahead and give me a like down below, a share, a subscribe. Those things are all great. They all help out a lot. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. From Hoosier Hardware, I'm Shane. I will see you in the next video.